I'm going to fix this TV which is experiencing both the black and white picture fault as well as intermittent power issues. Our customer stated the TV sometimes turns on and back off. It has to be powered on several times before it finally stays on. They also stated the TV randomly shuts off. The problem with these symptoms is that they are both easy and difficult to diagnose. More on that in a little bit. First, let's open it up. I'm going to start by removing the perimeter screws. Then the one over here and below the power cable. And our last one over here near the main board. Now we can lift off the cover. Now that we've removed our back cover, we'll want to focus on our main board. While I remove it, I want to go over this difficult yet easy diagnostic. Almost all faults, including the black and white picture and power issues, are due to a software corruption on the main board. Because this is a software-based failure, we can't use our multimeter to detect this issue. Now because this is the only board that commonly fails, it is in very high demand and no longer available for sale, so we will have to do a component level repair. Let's bring the board to our workbench and show you how to fix it. I mentioned a software corruption earlier, and unfortunately the only way to fix it is removing and reprogramming this chip right here. This is called a NAND chip, which has 24 pins on each side, 48 pins total. Now we do have this chip pre-programmed available for sale on our website, but I don't recommend purchasing it and sell it yourself unless you have advanced soldering skills. Half the chips we sell don't get installed correctly, and most often there's more damage that gets inflicted to the board. Typically when customers sent in their damaged boards, we can still fix them, but not always. For the removal process, I like to start by adding a lot of solder on one side of the chip. And with my metal pick, I'll go ahead and lift the chip off the board. Just like that. We'll flood the other side with solder. And this time I'll go ahead and grab it with some tweezers. And there we go. I do have a little bit of residual solder bridging these two pins over here, just down here on these two pins as well. So we'll go ahead and clean that off and then remove the flux. So to remove the excess solder, I'm just gonna use the iron and brush it away, just like that. And same on this side, there we go. So I'm just spraying it with isopropyl alcohol, flooding it and using a brush to just brush off that excess flux. We'll do the bottom side as well. Now that our chip is nice and clean, we can go ahead and install it in our programmer and reprogram it. Put the chip in the socket. Let's go ahead and detect the chip. Okay, and we're gonna start by erasing it actually, because when it does that, it'll check for bad blocks and it does detect three bad blocks, which is an issue, which means we actually can't reprogram this chip and we do in fact have to replace it. So I'm gonna remove our original chip and we'll put a brand new one in there. And we'll detect again. Same thing, erase. All right, and this time it did not detect any bad blocks, so we can go ahead and program it. The program is going to take a few minutes, so let's go back to the workbench and finish cleaning up the board in the meantime. So the main cleanup we want to do is all that excess solder that I put on there to remove the chip. So using my desolder wick, we'll go ahead and remove all that. And now we can remove the excess flux, so alcohol and a Q-tip. All right, so our chip did program successfully, so it's ready to install. So I'm just adding a little bit of solder to pin one and two, and we're gonna gently slide the chip into place. And that looks good to me. Looks lined up on the other side. I'll tack it down a little bit here. And now we can go ahead and add some flux. So I did put an excessive amount of solder on there. We'll have to remove some of it. We're gonna use our desolder wick again. I don't wanna to remove too much though. Perfect, and we'll go ahead and do the other side now. And same as on the other side, we have a little excess at the end here. And we have a couple bridges, so I'll bring that excess solder over. Perfect. We'll go ahead and do a final cleanup. And before we reinstall the main board into the TV, I wanna do a final check on my work using my metal pick. We're gonna go ahead and rake the pins. And none of the pins move, meaning they are properly attached to the board. Also no movement, now we can go ahead and lock test. All right, the main board is connected back in. 
Okay, and we do have our colors back on our picture here on the HDMIs. So we do have another successful repair. If you found the content helpful or useful, make sure to leave us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.